episode of Road to Uni Talk. You can see sitting by my side there, Alan and Haley. Uh, our topic is going to be arts and law. So um, before we get started, I can just share with you some slides and well, we're waiting for the other people coming. Okay, so next one. You can see um, we are having this QS mentorship and coaching program. You can see Haley in the top left corner there. She is one of our mentors. Um, if you are in our um, QS VCE programs or level 10 above, you can uh, join this program and you can get help from our fantastic mentors about uh, study tips, uh, time management tips, and um, healthy life habits, everything you want to talk to your seniors, it's a great opportunity. And the next slide will be the VC timetable. So our early bird offer ends tomorrow. If you are interested in any of the courses, feel free to contact us as soon as possible to get the discount. And yeah, so definitely we welcome everyone to um, ask any question they want to uh, know about for our VC center courses. Yeah, so this is just a slide about our whole year discount. If you enroll one subject for the full year, you get 15%, the second subject 20%, and the third subject you will get 25%. It's, it will end by tomorrow. So yeah, just everything I gotta say from now. And shall we get started? <laughs> Hello again, Ella and Haley. Uh, welcome to our show. Um, please, first of all, tell us more about yourself. For example, what VC subject you did, which high school you went to, and what's your hobbies? So, shall we start from? Ladies first. Ladies first? <laughs> sure. So, I graduated from Bowen in 2021, and the VC subjects I did were English, literature, studio arts, chem, and further. And Apart from studying, I usually spend my time taking photos. Um, mm -hmm. I really appreciate like film and digital photography and reading and recording music. Wow, are you in any um, photography like societies of your uni or? Uh, I have yeah. looked at a few, but I mostly just do it with my friends. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. How about you, Alan? Well, my name is Alan. I am a third year fourth year, if you mm. like, uh, Monash University Law Commerce student. Uh, what did I do? It's a long time ago. I <laughs> know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, right? English, English language, more mm -hmm. specifically. Methods, special chemistry, legal studies in French. Oh, was, wow. Yeah, no yeah. Chinese. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've been, I graduated all the way in 2019 from Camel Grammar School. It's a long time ago. Uh, I don't get much free time now, unfortunately. Okay. Um, what have I been doing recently? Oh, okay. I've I've been I've been taking up golf. I know it's not cool. <laughs> I know it's really expensive and it's really hard, which is a bad thing because I'm poor and really bad at it. So there you go. Um, but I'm yeah, sure we'll get better. Eventually, <laughs> eventually, it might take right. a couple thousand dollars, but we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. For those who don't know, BC, in BC you actually have to take English, but you can choose from English. English language, which is uh, what Alan did, and English literature. So between the both of you, you did English literature and English language. So why why did you choose English language over the two other English subjects? Uh, I so okay, I, I don't know what it was like at all, but mm -hmm. um, at Camberwell, yeah. all the way from year seven to about year ten, yeah, you basically like did VC English, if that makes sense, right? Oh, really? And I didn't really like it. <laughs> so um, so they had like a meeting where they told you about all the Englishes and all mm -hmm. the subjects and stuff. And they're like, English language is completely different. You know, mm. It's a brand new approach. Mm. You don't really look at texts and such. You look at the actual language itself. And also, um, for those of you who are doing French and Latin or mm. considering doing French and Latin, a lot of English language, English, English language is grammar based. So if you do, you know, subjects where you have to learn the grammar and the fundamentals all over again, you do kind of have an advantage. Oh, okay. And so I was doing French and I thought, well, I didn't like English. Mm. I'm doing French. It sounds perfect for me. And also, if you really, really care, um, the scaling is a bit higher. Than oh, okay. <laughs> right. 
So if it, you're doing French and then you find English language actually help you with the linguistic. It did. Side, it did. Yeah. Right? yeah. Okay, Haley, why uh, English and literature are not English language? Yeah, so I have always liked writing in books, and so it was really like a no-brainer to do like English mm. and literature. Um, that, like, that's the only reason. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just really liked English, and um, literature was really, really beneficial mm. and really valuable for someone that really enjoys English. That's to say, like, it's very hard. But it's definitely worth it, and I learned a lot. So, yeah, yeah. But that's if you're like very, very passionate about English. Otherwise, right. I would, don't do it too English. <laughs> yeah, I would think about it. Like, don't do it. Yeah, not a lot of people did two Englishes. I think only three people in that year, including oh. myself. Yeah. So it's not a common thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. So you got a lot of essay writing for English and literature, and not so much for English language. Is it? Uh, well, obviously for you. A lot. Mm -hmm. um, there was essay writing. Okay. In some ways, it was harder because you had to learn a completely new type of essay. Mm. I can't remember what they're called. Um, language analysis or something like that. Okay. I can't remember the specifics. But you basically had to. You don't learn. You don't do traditional English essays like thematic essays or whatever. But you do still have to. You still have to write. If mm. That makes sense. So yeah. you can't get away from it. Yeah. But it is, get away. it is. It is new. It is different to what you're supposed supposed to be learning, like this after ten. It was fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you also mentioned you did legal studies, did. and now you're doing law. I did. How helpful was that? <laughs> what did you say? Here we go. <laughs> Do you so, yeah. um, I the the problem with legal studies is it doesn't it doesn't really go far enough. Mm. There are a lot of units or subjects in BC where. Like you go to uni and you do them and you're like, this is exactly what I did in year 12. Okay. Like um, when I, I, I do commerce as well. So yeah. I did accounting. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone who did year 12 accounting was like, this is so easy. This I've already crazy. learned everything, right? Yeah. I'm like, it must be nice. Mm -hmm. um, but for legal studies, very little of it was actually like transferable, unfortunately. Was it too foundational? It, it, it kind of went in the wrong direction a little okay. bit. Sorry. Um, but look. What what it did do for me, and I'm I'm still glad I took legal studies mm. because it made me interested in law. Yeah. So it didn't really help me learn the content, but it did make me interested in it. So mm. that was that was more than enough I think, to justify the law. Right. So. Wait. Um. Is legal study a scale up? I, scale I, I don't up. think so. I don't <laughs> think so. Unfortunately, <laughs> I think it's scaled down by. In when I did it in 2019, it was scaled down by one. Okay. I don't know what it is now because it changes every year. Yeah. But I think yeah, it's probably still the same. Yeah. But you're just so interested in law and then yeah to do really yeah i did i did so it was worth it for me yeah yeah that's nice nice combination um and next question will be which university are you in right now you just mentioned melbourne and monash why did you make that choice starting with Haley, why melbourne <laughs> so i chose melbourne because i knew that i wanted to do a bachelor of arts yeah and so i did a bit of research and what came up was that melbourne had the highest ranking mm -hmm. course in Bachelor of Arts. So mm -hmm. I was like, this can't really go wrong. So that's the main reason. Um, another reason was because they didn't make you choose your major in first year. Yeah. So you had like a bit of time to think about yeah. what you wanted to specialize in yeah. before actually having to choose, which I think a lot of other courses don't really allow you to do. You mm. kind of just jump straight into it. Okay. But for Melbourne in the first year, you kind of are allowed to explore a little bit, which is why I did like such a different range of subjects this year mm. and also because they offered this thing called breadth which allows you to choose a subject that is actually in a different major oh. um, just to provide more variation in okay course and just keeps it like interesting yeah. but i know that has a lot of mixed opinions because some people actually don't like that they offer breadth like oh. they would rather completely focus, focus on like their major yeah so, what breadth yeah. subject did you take so this semester i took Free speech and media law, oh, which was interesting. really interesting. And my other breath was more like for fun, which was called making movies. Mm. Is yeah. it one breath uh, per semester? So you, you can to... you can choose, like you can oh. space it out as much as you want. Mm -hmm. But I just know that you have to do four breaths subjects in the Bachelor of Arts. Um, and yeah, most people just put it like first semester, one breath, second, mm -hmm. and then so in your third mm -hmm. year you don't need to do any more breaths. Is that only uh, what Bachelor of Arts students can do or? I'm not sure 
like most of the bachelors, they all yeah. have breaths. Oh, okay. I'm not sure if it's for like how many breaths oh. they can do. Yeah. yeah, and also the range might be a bit smaller as well. Yeah, that's yeah. so interesting. So, Alan, why Monash? So, I would have loved to have gone to Melbourne. Okay. I would have loved to. The problem is they don't have undergraduate law. Mm, that's the same for all, basically all. Yeah, I, I, I don't know the specifics, you're probably more qualified, Hans, but like the Melbourne model, right? Yeah, they don't have it. They have yeah. the, um, the JD. Yes. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I didn't want to wait until mm. I did law. <laughs> so um Monash was the next bit. Obviously, there's you know other schools like Deakin or RMIT or whatever, mm -hmm. but I thought Monash is probably the next best option. So I'll take that. Yeah. And it's still it's still a good option, I think, in my opinion. Yeah. Um also I got to do a double degree. Mm. So I got to do law commerce at the same time. That does mean I don't get to electives, which we just talked about with breadths mm. and stuff. Um, but for me, I, that wasn't as much of a problem for me because like you said, I was one of those people who just like, yeah, I just want to do it. Okay. I don't, I don't really mind to not really do mm -hmm. breads. It's fine about it. Mm. Uh, but I know if you do straight law, for example, yeah. just will God help you. Second of all, um, you do get electives in straight law. So it's, really? not, it's not all bad. So there you go. Um, but yeah, so for example, we're doing a double degree. Uh, the commerce one, for any double degree, law will take priority, if that makes sense. Oh. Yeah. So for example, um, oh, this is the same for law, engineering, uh, so long. Computer science. Computer science, people do that, but I think it's slightly different because it's not an honors degree. Oh. Um, for, with, with an honors degree, if you do a double, yeah. it kind of takes over the whole degree. Mm. So, um, for example, uh, my fifth year, for example, because mm. I have to do a fifth year, um, it's all law. There's no commerce. I will, I will have finished my commerce degree by then. So, what you would say three three years of law and two years of commerce? I think it's four years of law. If oh, you do it, right. oh, sorry, um, four years of commerce. Oh, if you do it normally, because oh, yeah. like you said, you can choose to you know do it however you want. You mm. could theoretically do your comms degree in one year and then do your law. Okay. Um, I wouldn't recommend that, but <laughs> it, is, it is available to you. So most people do their law, art, science degree, or whatever it is. Mm. Um, sorry, uh, arts and science or mm. commerce degree, whatever it is, in four years, and then they do the law degree at the same time, and then in the fifth year, it's just law or oh. it's just engineering or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. I see. So choice is yours. Good. So between a uh, double degree of commercial and law and mm. straight law, which one is harder to get in, you would say? Oh, oh harder yeah. to get into? Yeah. That's easy. They're both equally as hard to get into each other, right. funnily enough. Right. Oh, well, I'll qualify that. Because obviously, if you're doing a double degree, like science or um, commerce, whatever, that might have additional prerequisites. So in that sense, it's harder to get into because you have to do more do stuff. stuff yeah. In terms of ATAR, I think they're just as hard as each other. The ATAR is oh. about the same. Right. But yeah, it's harder in the sense that you have you have to do like maths or English or science or whatever. Mm. Um, and I forgot what I was going to say. So there you go. Yeah. So yes. the question I was going to ask is um, commercial and then law double degree and straight law. Mm. Why did you choose double degree? Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, I, I didn't know this actually at the time that I chose my degree. Yeah. I did put straight law down as like my fourth preference or something, so I wasn't planning on getting it, mm. but um, I did put it down nevertheless. And I did I did law commerce because I thought I might actually end up disliking law. So if I end up disliking law, I'll just go to commerce, right? In reality, I ended up disliking commerce, yeah. and now I just <laughs> want to do law. So now I'm like, do I just drop my commerce degree or something? Um, but I think I'll stick it out. And um, for straight law students, obviously, like it, straight law, it's four years instead mm. of five. So you uh, one great benefit of that is you get less debt, which is nice, <laughs> um, and you get electives as well. The problem is um, doing straight, like, like I've had a look at the map for, because they, they give you course progression maps, right? Just like you must do this subject in first year, you must do this subject yeah. in second year, et cetera. Yeah. So they help you out, which is nice. Mm -hmm. And I'm having a look at the subjects that they have for straight law and I'm like, that's that looks so hard. <laughs> yeah, I'm like that, oh God, I, I don't think I could do that. So I'm glad that I have my commerce degree to like mm. not get burnout, if that makes sense. Yeah. Or not, not so, so I didn't have to put all my eggs in one basket, if that makes yeah. sense. So, yeah. Yeah, so many of our guests to uh, brought to uni mm. of the Monash student Monash University, they do a double degree, and all of them they said uh, it gives you more of an opportunity, and you have your um, you have an open end yeah. to, to decide which which side to focus more mm. on, which is really nice. And our next question is, what are the key differences? between high school and uni after you've three years of uni and you've just done your first year 
what would you say is the most interesting or shocking aspect of that? Uh, yeah, sure. So after experiencing my first year, what I've noticed is like the biggest difference for me mm-hmm. is just how much more control I have over how much how I want to spend my time. Yeah, that's probably like the key one. And yeah, that means I get to choose what I want to do during the week, how I want to space out my classes, mm-hmm. and when I want to schedule my work hours, study or like with friends. That's just all up to me, and nobody's also keeping track or keeping mm. of of how I'm progressing. So that's also giving me a lot more responsibility in how I want to spend my time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely the freedom. Yeah. Balance, I was I was going to say everything that. <laughs> yeah. Um. There is the other thing, of course. Uh. You, obviously, you're a lot older now. Mm. Now you're in uni, so you get a lot more flexibility. Like you might have a job, so you might be saving money, so you yeah. can obviously um have fun with that. You might be driving, um. So that gives you a lot. That adds to the flexibility thing, right? Mm. Um. It is kind of weird how because the semester is only twelve weeks. Mm. Um. I don't know if it's the case for Melbourne, but unfortunately, um. Like your your schedule changes every twelve weeks, basically. Like last semester, I was going into uni one day a week. Now I have to go. Oh, this sorry, semester one, I was going in one day a week. Mm. The second semester, I had to go on three days a week. So I had to like change, you know, when I work. I had to like, you know, hang out with friends. I had to change all that schedule and stuff like that. So it does change every twelve weeks, but it's it is kind of fun actually because it like keeps you on your toes, and stuff like that, mm. and it's never the same. Which is weird. Yeah, yeah. I was just gonna ask what's an average day or average week well, about that, and yeah. then Alice said it's just different from person to person and degrees. Yeah. Degree. Haley, what what would you say about your average week or day? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I would say like from it's semester to semester, it's pretty different. Yeah. But luckily in Melbourne, if you get in preferences early mm-hmm. enough, then you can kind of keep it the same. And so, what a day in my life at Melbourne, I guess, has looked yeah. like this year is um, just getting up early before classes, uh-huh. making sure I have my, all my things. Mm-hmm. Um, that usually just includes my laptop. That's pretty much the most important thing because I can like take notes. And then I'll usually head to class and then only have more about like three classes per day. Okay. I don't really like having more than that because it's, it's a bit tiring. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, and then my day will usually end around three. But I know a lot of people that and much later mm. but that's usually because they get in their preferences pretty late oh. and so they all have to have that take the, the late class <laughs> <laughs> yeah right I yeah see. and um i remember some people say they only they're only doing online classes is that what was is that um case for you guys do you have to yeah so only one of my classes this semester was online and that was making movies but most of them now like especially mm. that COVID's kind of this is yeah like we can then most of them is on on campus mm. and i'm pretty sure that next year they're going to try and make everything yeah on campus right so next yeah. year in melbourne everything's gonna be yeah up. yeah how about yeah. monash do you have yeah i was gonna say i know a lot of people in melbourne for some reason you guys were a lot slower i think to open up after yeah. covid than we were but I, I was, maybe they were being cautious maybe i don't know <laughs> um but yeah for one much is great because you can go in person mm-hmm. and 99 percent of the classes are recorded so yeah. if you miss it you just watch it back whenever you want oh that's like yeah that's another yeah. good thing. there you go yeah. and also if you're really lazy you can put it on two times speed and you know, <laughs> cut it down in half if you really want um sometimes it's even better because the lecturer does talk really slowly so it's like to get through it, you can put on through high speed. Yeah, it sounds. Um, awesome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I know. Right. <laughs> nice story. I, I, yeah. um, I used to watch all my lectures in two times speed. Okay. Um, and it was funny because the professor obviously talks a bit differently when he's on yeah. two times speed. Yeah. And I had I had a meeting with him once, and <laughs> I got onto the call. I was like, "Why are you talking so slowly?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> that was his actual talking voice. I was like, oh, "Okay." <laughs> so there you go. So, yeah. So actually, in, in uni, you can watch a recording. You can. And it's nice schedule your own week <laughs> got a lot of freedom um but um the next question is i know you did uh, both did fantastically well in these years <laughs> so can you give us some study tips for our students oh, okay um i really have to think back now uh, <laughs> uh i i in high school i used this thing uh, i only learned about this in year 12 unfortunately yeah but there's this thing called the pomodoro study mm. technique which i still use in university 
And what it is, it's it, obviously it's impossible for anyone to like sit for three hours and just study really hard, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea is you break up into 30 minute blocks, you, which is kind of what we do at QS here for some reason. Mm. Like, <laughs> there's like, you know, at the front page of every module, it's like 20 minute blocks of work or something, which is, cool, <laughs> which is quite cute. Um, but the way it works is you do 25 minutes of really hard study, mm. like no interruptions, like dead silence. Um, you know, you throw your phone in the other room if you have to, like I do. And then for five minutes, then you can relax and, you know, take your mind off for a little bit. And then as soon as that five minutes over, you're back to another 25 minutes, stop for five, 25. Kind of, kind of, it's yeah. kind of like running a race a little bit. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah great. Yeah. Yeah. So that, yeah, that helps me, you know, and before I know it, like four hours was gone by. I've just done work, which is really nice. So, yeah. yeah. Hayley, do, what's your top tip for studies? It's probably sleep. <laughs> okay. I know that's a very, like, um, it's important. Obvious one, but honestly, would not have thrived at all in year 12 if I did not get my eight hours. Mm. Yeah, so I made sure that was consistent because, and it's hard to keep it consistent because there's so much work and there's always more to do. But yeah. I think like it's the only way to keep yourself refreshed for like long term productivity. Right. Yeah. In order to get enough sleep, the one thing you have to um, do well is time management, yeah. right? So can you give us some tips on that? I would just try to do the most difficult like tasks or yeah. the ones that I didn't want to do yeah, like, the earlier on earlier. and then just leave the ones that I knew I could still accomplish, like mm. even though I was a little tired till like later. But the hard ones I definitely put at the start. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I wish I'd known about the Pomodoro technique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I do know it. Yeah. I have like done a bit of research so I know it now. But yeah. That would have been handy. <laughs> in your Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Anything to add on? Um, I was going to say, I think the most important thing is just find out what works for you. Mm. So obviously, like you said, doing the hard task work that probably works for a lot of people that makes a lot of sense. Um, but like, I, I know a guy who, like, school would be from. This was in year twelve. Uh, he was a couple years older than me, though. But he, he, you know, he'd go to school from eight thirty to three thirty or whatever. Yeah. Go home, eat something. Then he would sleep from five p.m. to nine p.m. Oh. And then he'd wake up and just study for like four hours from like nine p.m. <laughs> until two a.m. or something. Mm. And then he'd sleep from two a.m. to six a.m. And then just go to school the next day, right? Yeah. Does it work well? For it, him? it for he, he ended up doing really well, mm. so he must have done something right. Yeah. Um, but I guess at the end of the day, yeah, just find what works for you. Yeah. yeah. Find your routine. I think that's the routine. So yeah, if you're a morning person, I assume you're a morning. Yeah. 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 Okay. There you go. <laughs> if you're a morning person, do the stuff that you don't like first thing in the morning or something. If you're a yeah. late evening person, do a late in the evening. Yeah. Great. Great tips. Um, so some of our students audience are in their year nines and year tens, and they're thinking about choosing their PC second. What's your like general advice for students who thinking deciding between subjects? What's your thoughts on that? Start with Haley. Yeah. So. If you're still uncertain mm. about what you want to do specifically after high school, which I was, yeah. mm. I tried to choose subjects that were generally prerequisites. So that's usually like chemistry, methods, and English. Yeah. I had no no problem with like English, mm. but I actually really enjoyed science back mm. in year 12. So I always wanted to keep that path open. So yeah. I took chem. And yeah, so I would, first of all, I would look at the prerequisites yeah. and choose if, choose at least a couple of those if mm. you're unsure and then second um definitely choose within your strengths mm. so that's usually the things that you're interested in i hope so yeah your strengths and prerequisites right so, yeah, yeah what Haley said is really important that if you have if you don't have any idea just look into what most university degrees require for example methods chemistry and english of course just do well in these three and these three and it won't close any of your options so it would be great um alan how about you What's i mean you just explained my whole strategy yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah my my thinking was i'll do methods um the weird thing at campbell was i did methods in year 10 mm, or year wow. 10 year 11 um and so there was like an unwritten rule that if you did methods in year 10 you had to do spesh Oh, uh, okay. I, I is this, you're the top I, this, Yeah, something, something like that. Okay. <laughs> Don't know why I was there, but anyway. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so I had to, I had like two of those blocked out. Yeah. And then obviously English, because you have to throw mm. a choice. And then chemistry, I, I didn't think I was going to do a science degree. But like you said, I mm. just kept it like just in case. I changed yeah. my mind at the last minute. Mm. And then afterwards, we did six at Campbell. I, I assume you could choose uh, however many. Mm. Um, but 
the other three, I just sort of did what I really liked. Mm. So legal, French, and um, I know that's it because I have to do two months. Mm. So legal methods and spech. Mm. Um, those were, they just have to be stuff that I liked anyway. Mm. So I was like, okay, cool. I can run that. But yeah, I mean, there is that, like the trap. It's like, oh, just do this subject because it's high scaling or whatever. <laughs> Which, like, it, it does work sometimes, mm -hmm. but um, I would prioritize what you're interested in before you look at high scaling. Because um, it can work, but only if you really, yeah, only in yeah. certain cases. I only if you're interested in subject and you can do well. Yeah, exactly. That. So if you hate subject, a, su uh, a subject, a subject, but <laughs> only because of uh, it scales up high, just don't, don't do that. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. you have to consider that you are going to be doing it. Entire for the end, yeah. right, two, yeah. maybe two years. Yeah, or yeah. two years. Two years. Yeah. yeah. So. That's actually what I was thinking about before choosing studio because there yeah. is like a myth that, like, oh, like studio is a little bit hard. Like, mm. you have to do if it's a portfolio subject, and obviously, like, scaling also like makes it worse. Yeah. But in the end, it turned out to be all okay. Mm. Like, as long as you like it, it's actually yeah. really important. Yeah. yeah. That's really important. Um, so the next one is, um, why did you choose the degree you're doing now? For let me start with Haley. So you mentioned a Bachelor of Arts. It has a lot of options. Can you explain a bit more why why do you want to do that? So at the time of before entering Melbourne, yeah, I really wanted to do a literature degree, and Melbourne offered really great subjects in it. Mm. So that's like that's why I chose that major. That Bachelor, yeah, mm. that's the main reason. Okay, yeah, literature but in Melbourne. Yeah, right? literature in Melbourne. Oh, yeah. right. And then how about? Oh, sorry, you? before I do that, I just yeah. want to ask: um, mm. What did you have any plans for after? After you finished your literature degree? Um. Well, it was either like education, right, mm. or law. Even. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Join yeah. the dark side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, there you go. Uh, so as for me, uh, I, I just I I did commerce in year nine. Mm. Sorry, yes, yeah, year, year, no, year ten. Sorry. Mm. Um, and the way they did it, Cam, was they they sort of did all the commerce subjects for VC. So they did legal, they did a bit of legal, they did a bit of accounting, did a bit of economics. I can't remember what they did at the end of the year. Um, but I remember doing the legal subject, and I was like, "Wow, this is really cool. Mm. I, I like this." So then I did it in year eleven. I was like, "Wow, I like it even more." And then year 12 obviously came the same thing. So by the end of, you know, when I was getting to picking my courses, I was like, yes, it's a no brainer. Like, yeah. I like this, let's do it. Yeah, right. Um, are there any VC prerequisites for your degree? And um, what are the ATAR requirements if you, a student want to do Bachelor of Arts in Melbourne Uni or want to do law in Monash? Or do you have any idea about scholarship options? And anything you want to talk about? Uh, so for the law, I mean, the ATAR is really competitive. Isn't it? Mm. Um, it changes every year, so yeah. there is that. Uh, and it gets even more complicated when you talk about like special consideration of season and stuff like that. But the selection rank, I think is the technical term, mm. it's 97 or 98 ish, somewhere okay. around there. I'd recommend the 99 if you like, want to guarantee it. Yeah. Obviously, it's still very possible to get into the 97 or 98, so don't stress about too much about that. Um, the alternative as well, which a lot of students do, mm. is they will start off with arts or commerce or science, or whatever, and they mm. transfer into law in the second year, which is also perfectly fine. Oh. Yeah. So if you don't if you don't meet the A types, it's not the end of the world. Mm. It just you know, it takes a bit longer, but that's fine. Um, as for subjects, I mean, English is obviously there, that's yeah. fair, but you're going to be doing that anyway, so that's mm. not a big deal. Um, there's no other prerequisites for law itself, as far as I know. But if you want to do a double degree, mm. that will obviously change uh, mm. which prereqs you use. For science, so law science, for example, it's English and a science subject. Mm. Law commerce, it's English and a math subject. So, yeah, it depends on what degree you want to do. But mm. for law itself, nothing. Yeah. Just a quick question. You mentioned you can go to Bachelor of, maybe Bachelor of Arts and then transfer next mm. year, second year. What's the requirement of that? You can't yeah. do it. <laughs> Um, I, I don't know the specific requirements. I think you, you have to get a reasonably good score at yeah. uni. Yeah. So it's it's not like you can just, you know, freeload for a year and <laughs> just change. <laughs> um, you do yeah. still have to work hard, obviously. Yeah. Um, and transfers are very competitive. So I think mm. you have to apply really early. Okay. Um, you do kind of have to commit once you do it. Mm. So once you say, I want to transfer, it's kind of like saying, okay, that's fine. 
because I don't know anyone who's like gone into arts and then transferred to law and then gone back to arts, for example. I don't know if that's possible. Mm. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's it's a pathway if, if, you, mm. if you need it. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you for the information. <laughs> Haley, how about you? What's the eight hour requirements for Bachelor of Arts? Blah, yeah, blah. so for Bachelor of Arts, thankfully it's like a little bit lower. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's like about an 88. Mm, I that's think. still hard. <laughs> still, yeah. yeah. Not not really a 99, though. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, still pretty competitive, um, ish. And it's the lowest expected was like 85, which I'd say is pretty pretty plausible mm. to get into. Mm. And the only requirement is English, which like Alan said, it's compulsory anyway. Yeah. And if you're wanting to do economics, though, they say that they recommend doing methods. Mm. Yeah. So you can choose majoring economics after you choose Bachelor of Arts. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Pretty interesting. Like, economics yeah. is also the same. Oh, okay. I don't know. I did not why. see that coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. So, any scholarship tips? I think you got one, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, my one was called the Principal Scholarship. Mm -hmm. And I think every school should have it. Mm. And it's essentially, it's from Melbourne, mm. but your principal is the one that recommends you. Oh. I think every school kind of does it differently, actually, because I had a friend in another high school who told me that their school did applications. Yeah. So students actually had the chance to like present themselves as worthy like candidates. Mm. But for my school, they just, I guess. Based on the age. Yeah, based, not even. Oh, they yeah. told me during my exams. Oh. Like, like <laughs> after my like further exam, yeah. like the um senior exec just came and, like was like you have a scholarship and I was like no way <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of bad timing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like wait like does that mean I have to like do even better like oh my my God. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like kind of yeah it was a bit bit of a interesting timing. It's hilarious. Oh. Yes, but it it was for this scholarship in particular it mm. was not only academic achievements so they've mm. looked at my what I've received in all my subjects yeah. throughout year 12, but also contribution to like the school or the community. So there was that second factor. Yeah. And I think I had done quite a few leadership positions. Right. So I was visual arts captain in mm. year 12. So I guess like that's another type of contribution that they might have attested to. Oh. So yeah, that, that has two different sides of it. Yeah. Um, another really, Fame, famous one mm -hmm. is the Chancellor's Scholarship. Yeah. And that's essentially, I'm pretty sure, like 99.5. And yeah. you get a free ride. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's based yeah. on the eight at your school. Yeah. Your school, but oh. you got yeah, sorry. You go. No, no. no. <laughs> I just remember there's also um, another, it's called a graduate package. Mm. And if you meet a certain HR requirement, it depends on which package, but you'll get a guaranteed into your master's degree to your graduate course. Yeah. 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 I remember one uh, Cherry who came here for the computer science topic. He she was um uh, she was guaranteed the what's it called data science master package. Yeah. So it was a ninety six or above. I, I don't I can't I remember it quite clearly, but definitely you've got this in Melbourne University. If you get high ADA score you can guarantee a master pathway yeah yeah it's pretty good motivation right. like doing that. you don't yeah. have to worry about that part but you didn't yeah. choose that no yeah. because i wasn't even i wasn't sure like you weren't sure what to do anyway right yeah yeah, yeah. So thank you for the information and we got a question from lisa who is in year nine she asked is lat test a must for melbourne mm. uni law and yeah alan so yeah, we, we researched this like yeah. uh, <laughs> beforehand because um, I, I unfortunately didn't research Melbourne more that much because I didn't want to do Melbourne degree, but I'm pretty sure it's not necessary anymore mm. as of this year. Mm. So lucky, lucky. But uh, I know historically they had to do it outside, but mm. that's not the case anymore, which is yeah. nice. Yeah, so you don't have to do it. But in, yeah, I suppose the problem then of course is your ATAR is even more important in a way. Mm. So you do still have to focus a little bit on that, but you don't have to worry about an extra test maybe. So yeah, that's it. That's yeah. pretty sure. Yeah, since you're only in year nine, just be aware of <laughs> the policy that's might true. change yeah. when you go to VC and application for your subject. So, um, our next question will be, what do you learn in your degree? For example, what subjects and modules you're doing right now, and what have you? Uh, what's what's the subject you enjoy the most, and 
least favorite or anything you can talk about to start with? Alan? <laughs> um, so this, this is the one complaint I have about law school. Yeah. Is it, being a lawyer and going to law school, or being a law student are two very different things. Mm. For example, being a lawyer, uh, I have a bit of experience as a paralegal. You, you're basically just writing letters all day. Mm. Um, so for it, when you go to law school, you study the subjects, you study theories around the law. For example, you will learn what a murder is, mm. but you won't, for example, learn how to explain that to a jury, which is kind of the important part of your job, right? You, um, so obviously, the, the, um, really the only way to learn how to be a lawyer is to go out and get a job as mm. a lawyer. But it is still very fun at university and you get to learn interesting, um, you get to learn the theories behind the law, which is interesting. You learn why did the law become this way, you learn the history of the law, um, if you're interested in that kind of thing. Um, that being said, I think my favourite subject, I don't know, I did like quite a few of them. Mm. From recent memory, I just finished a subject called Property B. That was a lot of fun. Very hard, but it was very, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, and for economics, which is my major in commerce, um, I think game theory was my favorite. Wow. Yeah, that it's was very interesting. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it is actually fun yeah. enough, um, but it's, uh, it's I think of it as cool maths. Mm. <laughs> so it's basically the science of decision making. Yeah. Um, so it's like proving mathematically what is the best decision for someone to do in any mm. situation, which is kind of cool. That's really good. Um, can you? Please just quickly outline the pathway to a lawyer. <laughs> oh, I see. Um, so yeah, obviously the, the starting point is a law degree, yeah. right? Um, that's kind of, I kind of need that. Mm. Uh, but the real sort of, um, the real meat of the bone, if you like, becoming mm. a lawyer yeah. is getting a job as a paralegal, law clerk, uh, legal receptionist, whatever. Mm. Uh, advice for people for that is start as early as possible. The you know, the, the less savory way to think about it is um, if you are worried about your wham, start early mm. because then, because uh, experience does sort of override wham, if that makes sense. Oh, right. Experience is more important than wham, I feel like. Mm. In law, at the least, I don't know what technology feels. Mm. Um, so start early, invest, uh, invest in that kind of experience, and then that will um, take you very, very far. Mm. Because, for example, if, if it's a if it's a job interview, you can say, mm. and it's a choice between a person with less experience with more experience sorry and a slightly worse wham mm. versus a person with less experience but a slightly better wham mm. i'd argue they'd probably take the person with more experience, more experience. Yeah. yeah so but obviously that depends so yeah is there a requirement for how many years of internship or experience do you have no, to do before i don't think so a lot of it comes down to the name value where you go, unfortunately. Oh. Um, but at the same time, you know, it, it's perfectly viable for you to go to a small boutique law firm, you know, spend a couple months, maybe a year there, and then move to a big, you know, a big A commercial firm, for example. So that's perfectly possible. And a lot of people do that. Mm. Um, but the, the point is, yeah, try and get that on your resume as soon as possible. Yeah. So that's one thing you have to consider when yeah. you're <laughs> interested in law and education and stuff like that. Uh, Haley, how about you? Uh, yeah, so this semester I took creative nonfiction mm. from Plato to Einstein, which is this history and philosophy of science subject, wow. making movies and free speech and media law. And those were all very, very interesting. But I would say that from Plato to Einstein was probably my favorite one. That sounds so interesting. Yeah, yeah just because of how much I, I learned, really. Yeah. Yeah. So you're doing Bachelor of Arts, but you can definitely get it, it, a touch of science. Too, yeah, yeah, actually, this is a quite an intersection, I feel, because mm. science majors do have to do their breadths as well. Yeah. And so I find that a lot of them actually do take this subject mm. or are in take breadth subjects in this major mm. because it has relations to science. Okay. Yeah. What's your the assessment for that course? Would you write an essay or what's the... So it's actually very interesting. What I did was a lot of writing, for mm. sure. That's what most of Bachelor of Arts students have to do. Yeah. What we did in this subject was we had three primary sources. And what that means is we just took, we had extracts from very old texts. So yeah. from Plato. Plato. <laughs> yeah. So we had to interpret that yeah. and then kind of 
summarize and offer our understanding of the historical context around that. Mm. Those three assignments were a lot shorter than the final one. Um, the final one was like a research essay. Okay. Yeah. How many words is that? 2,000. 2,000. Yeah. Which yeah. is actually not a lot. No. <laughs> <laughs> There's not enough room to talk about a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Even though it might sound like a lot, it is pretty daunting to think about. Yeah. But there's a lot that you can't you can't like put into your essay. Yeah. A lot of that writing an essay, which our professors talk about, is actually mm. thinking about what not to include what? rather than yeah. like what to include. Yeah. Because if it's messy and all over the place, yeah. then it actually makes your argument a lot weaker. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So you will get a word limit for essay writing yeah. uh, assessment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Think about what to include and not to include. Yeah. For that. Um, so do you have any least favorite subjects for your degree Ooh. or you just love your I actually so just love it so much. <laughs> 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 okay. Must be yeah. nice. <laughs> maybe maybe love, love in the next two years. I, I just can't, like, I really like my course. Yeah. I just can't imagine not liking it because this is I'm this is something that I just really like to do. Yeah. Just like learning about content and also being to express what I think about them. Mm. It's just really nice. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people loving their degrees. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So next question is, uh, can you give us some suggestions from suggestions for students who want to study in your degree? Preparing it from year seven, shall we say? Um, yeah, if a year seven students want to do law, what do you recommend? Ooh, uh, <laughs> I think yeah. it's probably the same for arts. Mm. Get good at English. Like, get really comfortable with English. Writing. Uh, writing. Right, writing. Not, believe, funnily yeah. enough, not just writing, not but just reading. Just. Reading is often more important. Mm -hmm. And communicating as well. Yeah. Um, like you said, often less is more when it yeah. comes to communicating and essay yeah. writing. Mm. So get Get good at obviously writing a lot of words, but also writing the best words. I think that's probably the best. Exactly, yeah. Because, um, like you said, you know, we get word counts all the time, mm -hmm. and it's yeah, it, we, we do have to cut off a lot of words. It's so painful. Yeah, it writing is. a paragraph, and like, I, have to, I have to let you go. See ya. So, <laughs> Kill your darling. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So sad. Um, but yeah, like I said, so get get comfortable with English, mm -hmm. um, and really get comfortable with problem solving. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, I guess, and then the last thing is attention to detail. That's yeah. the really, because for law exams, for example, all they are is just a story mm. uh, where, you know, some something's happened and then the person in the story comes to you and says, please advise me as to, um, you know, what, what my legal rights or responsibilities are. Mm. And, you know, it's always very sobering when we see the examiner's reports, for example, after the exam's done. And it's always a lot of students miss this very important detail. <laughs> and we're like, oh, okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> so get very important, get very used to um, spotting details in in texts. Yeah. Um, I was once told that uh, as like a bit of a test, mm -hmm. if you really want to see whether or not you, you uh, are built for law, you know those like terms and conditions agreements that yeah. everyone like skips through, yeah. and, like for like accept because it's like, yeah. yeah, I want to get to the website or whatever. Uh -huh. Try and actually read one of those right, and hilarious. see if like you can actually sit through it all uh -huh. <laughs> and see if you can memorize and remember a little bit from it. That's like the real litmus test, you know. That's like the patience mm. test to see if you have what it takes to essentially yeah, be a That's a great test, yeah. and it's very accessible. It when, anytime you want to click on website. Just yeah. read the yeah, just read it, have a go. Yeah, yeah. 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 See if you like law. Yeah. <laughs> Hayley, how about you? Yeah, my tip was is pretty pretty relevant as well, mm. which is just writing. Mm. Like I wish I developed a habit of writing every day. Like if that's even possible, done no, it probably is. Like it doesn't matter what you write. Mm. Just as long as you write something, you kind of have that habit of always putting pen to paper. Yeah. Then that's an amazing habit you can develop and to prepare for Bachelor of Arts because like I said, like the entire course is basically essay writing. Mm -hmm. So there's really no better way. Aside from that, I would actually also advise brushing up on your general knowledge. Mm. And so what I mean by that is like your knowledge of cultural shifts or historical events or uh, just timing mm. about what's happened in history and all this, all of that, yeah. because in arts, they expect you to have a foundation or mm. at least some kind of knowledge over what happened yeah. and so in order to save you time mm. and understanding about the historical context or background of anything 
then you can just get straight into the assignment. But if you don't know that stuff, it obviously takes you a bit of time to grasp what's actually happened. Right. Yeah. So how do people actually do that? <laughs> Honestly, like YouTube is great. YouTube? Yeah. Now nowadays it's so accessible. You can just search up like history of Europe. I remember right. watching a video on it um like maybe a few weeks back. Mm. And there's this one video in particular that showed all the shifts from like just like a lot of years back and then just shows like countries and how they developed into what we now see as Europe. Yeah. And so that's a really easy way to grasp like, yeah. what has happened. What's your favorite channel about that? Do you have? I remember when uh, Crash Course. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they looked really nice. Crash, Crash Course is probably one of, one of the ones I enjoy most. Yeah. 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 Definitely get um, your general knowledge. Um, so the next question is work experience and voluntary service recommendation. Did you do any work experience during high school or uh, any volunteering service now? Anything you want to talk about? Yeah, so my first work experience that I ever had was probably in year nine. And this was back in Hong Kong because I only just moved mm. three years ago. Mm. So this was my work experience in Hong Kong. And I did a sort of internship like work experience with this professional mm. co pro like architect turned professional cal calligrapher okay. and oh. <laughs> yeah and it was it was really interesting mm. like I learned about how she works on her jewelry business so she uses her architecture skills to render calligraphy onto like 3d sites wow. and then and then develop them Go to a factory and then send it, send those renderings to them and then turn them into bracelets and Ooh. jewelry. Yeah, so I just watched her do all that for a week, and it was really cool. Yeah. Really, really That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and a funny story. I met her because I was walking past like a stationery store, mm -hmm. and she was just doing a pop up booth, literally like Kiki K. I don't know if you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She was just doing like a calligraphy booth and just drawing on some notebooks and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I approached her and I was like. As a year nine student, <laughs> hey, like I've got, I've got high school work experience. Like, do you want to take me on for a week? And so she was, she was surprisingly said yeah. Like, mm. and so I would actually really recommend just going out yeah. and asking people. Yeah, because you never exactly. know. Actually, like a lot of people will say yes to you if you ask. Yes. Yeah. I do also volunteer right now mm. at this creative hub, and it's called Burundara Youth Hub. Mm. And part of this, I'm part of this group called Solo Productions, and what we do is create art events for young people to showcase their creativity. Right. Yeah. Is that once a week? What's, how many hours do you contribute? To? Just about two hours every week. Two hours. Yeah. Long. Which is really, it's really fun. Mm. And we've held a few events this year, which have been also very insightful because they've allowed me to develop like leadership skills yeah, as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah alongside your uni studies get yes, uh, this opportunity to practice yeah. other skills yeah. yeah i would definitely suggest like anyone who's looking for work experience mm -hmm. who's a creative yeah to not like limit themselves to a particular area though right i reckon like anything creative will yeah. always teach you something new like i imagine now i would really want to find a job at like perhaps a museum or like a publishing company or mm -hmm. something like that mm -hmm. But if I had limited myself to those two scopes, I would have missed out on a lot of other unique opportunities right. that were would have been equally as like valuable. Yeah, just explore the world. Yeah, <laughs> like explore the world, literally. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Alan? Yeah, I was just gonna say, um, you can find like work experience in like the weirdest of places. Mm. Um, just like volunteer stuff. Mm. Like I know a person who was working at a crepe stand and mm. she met her future like law clerk boss. Okay. Yeah. So she got a job through that. I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So you literally just go out and do anything, really. Mm. And you'll probably get something that somehow ends up being very valuable for you in the long run. So literally anything. As long as you get out there, that's the first step, isn't it? You really yeah. have to put yourself out there, which is the get some momentum. That's the hard thing mm. because it, it is hard. Um, and I, I, I don't know, but um, you, you, you can get turned out. Obviously, mm. obviously yours is yeah. yeah nice and nice and uh, right. <laughs> uh, very, yeah there you luckily, go luckily. good success rate yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah for example once you get into uni for example and you're applying for jobs 
then you have to get used to being turned down. Mm. I've been turned down many, many, many times. Yeah. Um, I've definitely got more. Oh, it's, it's really bad because sometimes they send you an email, sometimes they don't. Uh, and then if they don't send you, you have to send them an email saying, hey, do you remember when I gave you a job? And they're like, yes, we do. We just didn't want you. I was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you do have to get used to that. But um, it is a process. And mm. eventually, like no matter what, you will get one here. That's yeah. just the truth if you try harder. Do you have a memorable work experience? Uh, <laughs> I, as in like high school or university yeah, work um, I did, so high school work experience, I, well, I didn't really know what I wanted to do at the time I did high school work experience. So I was just kind of taking anything for that because I know in year nine, for example, you have to do, so I think it's the same for you as well, but mm. um, you have to do like one week of work experience where it's just yeah. like in a professional area. Yeah. And I didn't know I wanted to be a lawyer at the time. So I ended up doing, um, I ended up working at uh, Coles Digital out of all places wow. yeah i know which is like um like the the it office uh behind coles like so you know if you have a complaint or something about the website that's where they go mm. um and there was one activity where um the good thing about them was uh for some reason for a lot of work experience programs i don't know if this case feels but um unfortunately if you like volunteer at the last minute mm. you end up sort of just sitting there for a week because they don't really know what to do with you so yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a bit unfortunate but what i recommend is either get work experience with someone this is for the work experience program not mm. like a job or anything mm -hmm. um get work experience with someone that you know um like personally like a family friend or something mm. or a place that actually has like a dedicated program yeah. to work experience because then you actually have something to do yeah um, which is a lot of fun instead of just photocopying like I know lots of people who've got really cool places that look on their resume. Like I know someone who went to the Supreme Court. The big names. Yeah, exactly. Right. The big names. <laughs> yeah. The problem is, of course, they don't know you, so they don't really know what to do with you. Mm. Like my friend who went to the Supreme Court, I would have loved to have gone to the Supreme Court in, in hindsight. Mm. Um, but she ended up just photocopying things all day. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, kind of have to play the cards a little bit. Mm. So for Coles Digital, it was cool is um, we had an activity where we had to design like a, a product box, right? You would have liked that, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly right. Um, it was just for cornflakes or something, and they ended up using it in their production line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, they discontinued it now, which oh. is unfortunate. So, did you keep one then? No, I didn't actually. Oh. I really wanted to, but I'm, I'm a Woolies fan. I'm not a Coles fan. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. so that was fun. Right. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so we just touched about that. Um, what's your uh, the potential career paths for your degree and opportunities. What jobs are there after your degree? So definitely you can start with Ellen. You did law, so yeah, lawyer. Yes. Anything to add on? That's, yeah, that's kind of the obvious one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, I know a lot of people say I want to. I do law, not knowing what I want to do with it, but mm. they think it looks good on their resume, which it does. The problem is law school is very geared towards you. Excuse me, but if you like, they assume you're going to be a lawyer in the future. Yeah. So they plan the lessons in the course around the idea that you're going to be a lawyer in the future or a judge or a barrister or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, my advice is go to law school if you want to be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. That's the long and short of it. Um, there are, you know, like I said, in the long term, you can become a law, you can become a solicitor or a barrister, a judge, uh, a consultant. Um, they're free in high demand for law degrees. In the short term, there's stuff like paralegals, law clerks, legal receptionists, blah, 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 all that fun stuff. So there's you know, short term and long term goals. Mm. Um, so that's 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 the beauty of a law degree, I suppose. But I think the more interesting part is the liberal arts degree, isn't it? Yeah, yeah exactly. so there is like a common mm. perception that Bachelor of Arts is a not very employable yeah. degree, um, which does have its different facets in terms of like why people think that. Mm. But I think as much as like it's true that it doesn't prepare you for a specific career pathway as it does like a diverse range, a lot of people do end up going into very professional areas. So education is a big one, government mm. and, uh, and law. Mm. So those are three pretty big areas that special arts graduates usually end up going into. Um, and another thing about bachelor of arts is that although it may not give you like specific career path practical like skills it does give you very all-round um soft skills that you can apply yeah. to any mm -hmm. workforce <clears throat> so i would name like the three big ones yeah. as critical thinking mm -hmm. we all know that's like super super important and problem solving is a really big one and obviously it's very strong like written communication, communication yeah and so 
those three areas, I would argue, are pretty much applicable applicable in like lots Everything. of different areas. Yeah. yeah. And so they'll always be useful, like guaranteed, no matter what. Yeah. So we should definitely value the soft skills, the skills we learn in Bachelor of Arts. And yeah, keep your mind open. You you have everything in front of you. You have these core soft skills in your hand. So uh, I just got a last questions for them. Uh, so for the audience, if you have any question to ask Alan and Haley, feel free to drop them down in the Q and A section. We will return to the section after the last question. So it will be: uh, Do you have any future plans on further studies? For example, doing a master or any overseas um, education plans, Alan? Uh, okay, yeah. I don't really. Yeah. I, as soon as I finish my degree, I think I'm just going to go off and find a job. Mm. So straight to it. Uh, obviously, I know a lot of people are doing um, exchange right now. Yeah. So um, going to Europe, for example. Mm -hmm. Not jealous or anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> they go to Europe. Uh, there's also stuff in Malaysia. I think Monash has a Malaysia campus yeah, as yeah. well. Um, I'm not sure in specifics about that, but mm. um, that is, I think that's an option for most people. Mm. Um, there is, of course, things like PhDs, masters, whatever, mm. um, but I just haven't really considered it that much. So, um, but yeah, there's tons of resources out there if you want to like look into it further as well. Would you say it's not common for law students who do a PhD? They just <sighs> go into like you go straight into the <laughs> I, I yeah I, I'd say eighty percent of people just go straight oh. to the workplace. Yeah, a lot, a, a few people do masters mm. and even fewer do PhDs. Mm. Um, but it is definitely like a pathway there. So, right. Yeah. yeah, I think it's the other way around for Haley. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. I think because it does start off as a pretty broad yeah. bachelor's, mm. like it's definitely very beneficial to continue pursuing further studies. So yeah. I'll probably be doing a master's mm. just. So I can specialize in a really one particular era, yeah. area, and yeah, I don't know which masters yet. Mm. Probably will take the next two years to hopefully get yeah. a gist on that. You just have one or two years to yeah. think about it. Still a few, two years, two years to think about it. Yeah, um, and then I'll probably do masters. Yeah, right. Yeah. Thank you. So now we turn out to the chat and Q and A section. Just got one from Alan for Alan. From what age did you start learning French? Did you find VC French hard? Um, so I, I think my first official French lesson was all the way back in primary school. Um, but okay, primary school French is like you know, <laughs> one to ten, hello, bonjour, <laughs> stuff like that, right? Um, I, I started taking French seriously in about year seven, year eight. So mm. that's when I really had a lot of fun. Um, and of course, I went to France actually on mm. an exchange, not an exchange trip, but like a school trip. Yeah. two weeks that was a lot of fun um the weird thing was there were more art and history students than there on the french students but that's fine <laughs> um and so that that was you know an opportunity that i liked as a result of doing french um, what the second half of the question was um was a bc french high? oh uh so like i said because i was doing english language as well yeah and that kind of bleeded over a little bit mm -hmm. so doing those like concurrently was very helpful i think, yeah. I think. Um, but the other thing was I just really like French. Mm. And the good thing about languages is you can kind of learn them passively, right? Mm. You can watch movies, listen to French. Like I have all, literally like maybe a hundred songs of French music wow. just on my phone. Mm -hmm. um, I just listen to those on the way to school or something. Mm. Um, you can watch French movies. Like you can do really other weird stuff. Like you can put your phone in French if you want. <laughs> um, and uh, there was, I used to watch um, sports in French as mm. well. Um, so I used to watch, uh, when the French Open came around for tennis, I'd just watch that in French. Oh, and I'd be like, oh, okay, there you go. It's, I'm studying technically. <laughs> yeah. So that was nice. Yeah. So that would be your tips for VC French, would, right? Would, yes. So. Uh, but the, the important thing is you have to keep going. Because mm. for languages, for, I mean, for most of you, I assume, are learning Chinese right now. Mm. Like you, you really have to keep going. Otherwise, you will lose your touch eventually. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right. So VC French. How good is uh, your French right now? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Do you French in your law degree? No, not yeah. at all. Not at all. Um, if I'd look, I wish I'd learned Latin actually. Oh. Like, I use a lot of Latin, but like, it must sound really smart. <laughs> um, but no, not more French, unfortunately. Right. Thank you for sharing. Uh, now it's eight o'clock, so we're gonna finish our session. Do you do you, uh, do you have any questions? If you have any questions, feel free to chat, put it in the chat, <clears throat> and we'll answer it 
right now. So I will give like one more minute for you to type down your questions. Let me check. Oh my gosh. So yeah. Um, do you have any last minute tips for our audience or anything you want to say? <laughs> um, Bachelor of Arts is <laughs> you leave Melbourne, have to pay you some money. Right. Uh, I hope you enjoyed our night the night and thank you again, Alan and Haley, for coming. Lots of useful tips. And yeah, so I will see you guys next time, maybe in three weeks, the next session. So have a good evening.